So I have deliberately created a failing test and one that will fail for a couple of reasons in order to allow me to demonstrate the debugging facilities and approach within IntelliJ when I'm using Java. So essentially I have written some code which will print out a triangle that works well and it's got a nice 2D array printing routine that all works. So I've, start, I've started to create a 2D square printing um, and unfortunately that's got a, an out of bounds exception. I mean I basically just copied this code, put it in here, amended it a bit and that has failed with a, an index out of bound exception. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on the error to see what line it is. So then I know what line this has been thrown at. And it's something about an array index out of bounds exception of 16, which I mean, I want 16. So we've got an error there. For those of you that already know Java, it's probably obvious what the bug is, right? But we're going to go through the process of debugging this so we see the facilities. So I'm going to set a breakpoint on this line by clicking over here in the border. Then I can just run this test in debug mode. So I'll go debug. Then because of the breakpoint, it will stop there. Now when we're in breakpoint, I can see all the variables that are currently in place. And these will change as we go through. I can see where I am in the code. And if I want to, I can set up watches. So if I move to the next line, if I step over, then that will run the code that we're on the breakpoint and go to the next one, which it did. So it's um, added in an asterisk into square row i, where i was zero and row was zero. So into square position zero, zero, there was an asterisk. Now, one of the good things about being in debug mode is I can also evaluate expression. So if I evaluate this expression, and I make i equal to zero, which is what we just had. I see the asterisk. If I make it one and evaluate it, it's null because we haven't reached that point. Evaluate expression lets me write arbitrary code within the context of where we are left off with the breakpoint. So I can experiment with stuff and see what is going to happen. So if I do rule one, that's null. It was complaining before about 16. So if I make that 16, so I can see that I get an index out of bound exception when I become 16. So that should mean that 15 works. So 15 works, um, but it gives me a null. So I know pretty much what the problem is. If as soon as this becomes 16, I'll get an issue. So what I'm going to do is close down this evaluate expression. Now, as I go through, I can see all the variables. If I had a lot of variables, what I might want to do is add a watch on the i variable. Let me do it. If I had a lot of variables, I might want to add a watch on the i variable. And then I can step through and you'll see that the i variable on the watch increments so I can keep an eye on it. Now it's incrementing over here in the variables as well. I can expand all these variables. I can see exactly what's coming through. So I'm just going to take this to the point where we've got 15. Now, I, if it wasn't obvious before, arrays in Java are indexed at zero. This one is 16 long, so when it gets to 15, that's the end of the array. So the question is, why is it not stopping at 15? And the answer is here. Look, i, which is 15, is less than square width, which is 16 plus 1, 17. So it's not, this loop will iterate as long as i is less than 17. Really, I want to get rid of that plus 1 and then I'm good to go. And that is a side effect of me copy and pasting. So that was a, an error, but we figured that out through debug. So let me just run this to the end. Then let me run this again. And there we go. So there's no exception, but I'm not quite getting a 16 by 16 square here. So I have another problem in this code. 
Now really what I should have done is, because this is a method that this test is using, I should have wrapped this in uh, test methods and tested it before I started to use it. Uh, now even though it's doing a lot of system.outs, I should have written this to be testable and I should have written something that actually returns the string that I'm printing out so that I could test it or I could have mocked out the system.out print or whatever. I should have tested this but I haven't, so I'm just using it so now I have to debug it. We debug when we haven't been able to write tests and then we feel the pain for that. Okay, so I'm going to put a breakpoint here in this create square because we know that this builds up a square now, or we think we do. Certainly this doesn't throw an exception anymore. And let's figure out why this isn't printing it out. So again, I'm going to debug. I've got the breakpoint in place. Now previously I was doing step over. Now I'm going to step into because I want to go into the method that implements this. So if I just go through this, I can see that we're building up these lists. So outer list has got 16 things in it. Let's see if the inner list is created properly. Inner list has got this 16 things. So each inner list has got 16 stars, so it should print them out. Let me get rid of this watch. We don't need that. And if I step over now, we loop around all the inner things, print those out. Da, 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 da. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break point at this system.outprintll and resume to get to that point faster. There we go. So I've got printed out the 16 things in the inner list, and then I'm going to jump into the outer list. Oh, I've got a break. So that break is going to take me out of the outer list and leave me with the one thing that I have printed. So the console out is just the single thing. So really, the problem here is this break. So if I get rid of that, run my test again. All right. Square 16s, no issues. And there's one more thing that I forgot to mention. So if I reinstantiate this bug, I get it to the point where this is going to throw an issue. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. All right, we're on. You can see that before it's even executed this line, the variable has shown me that it's about to throw an exception because i is now out of the range. So when you're stepping through, also use the variables to see what issues there are. So there we go. Debugging in all its glory. So that was it. a very quick example of the debug facilities within IntelliJ and how we go about debugging our methods. Now, ideally, we'd want to use test-driven development. We'd want to put at test methods around our code before we use it. But if we don't, then we have to learn how to use breakpoints. Step through the code line by line, use the variables view to see what's going on, set up watches if we've got a lot of variables. Use the evaluate expressions functionality to experiment with the code when you're in the middle of things. If you're using something like WebDriver or you're testing a REST API, you can use evaluate expression to make things happen in the system, to jump forwards, to do a lot of experiments, to see if the code throws exceptions before you actually use it, that kind of thing. And you can use resume to run to the next breakpoint. And we did a step into to go to one part of the method. I hope that's useful.